This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Use the link in the description to get a one month free trial on Skillshare where you can find hundreds of classes, including my own, showing you to build awesome apps and learn all other skills you can possibly imagine. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a bit of a more technical video and talk about generic APIs. So it's a little hard to visualize up front, so without further ado, let's open up Xcode, destroy that like button, hit subscribe, and let's jump into it. So we're gonna start by creating a new project here. We're gonna stick with iOS and go with the app template, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this project generic API caller. And make sure your language is Swift. This works with both Swift UI and Storyboard. We'll stick with uh, Storyboard for today. And continue, go ahead and save the project wherever you'd like. And let's jump into generic ways of calling APIs. So what does that actually mean? So the name kind of gives it away. It's basically a one size fits all function where you can call any API endpoint, even if the result that you expect from it is different. And to model that, I actually got two API endpoints opened up here. This one here returns a uh, list of users. And then this other one here returns a list of to-do list items, just mock data, but we're gonna be using them since they differ in structure. So the first thing I'm gonna do up here is we're gonna create some constants and I'm just gonna drop the URLs in here. So we'll say the user's URL is going to be a URL dropping in this guy. And then the other one is going to be a to-do list URL. So to-do list URL. And the only difference here is the suffix. So this is gonna be to-dos. And our goal is basically to write a function where we can uh, call both of these APIs and decode using Codable their respective responses, but in a, in a way that's generic and extensible for any API. So before we even actually do that implementation, let's talk about the benefits of this. The benefit is that you have to write the code only once. It's flexible and extensible. Pretty cut and dry, but that's basically why it is uh, useful. So let's write it out down here. So I'm gonna put it as an extension of a uh, object and the object we're gonna extend is going to be URL session. And you guys will see momentarily why I'm gonna do it this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and write a function in here called request. Now every single request needs to take in a URL. Now we're gonna have this function be responsible for unwrapping the URL so we don't have to have you know guardlets everywhere because it's kind of annoying, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. The next thing that we wanna tell this function is what type of response do we expect to get back? Now this thing needs to be generic where I can pass in a different type of response based on the API that I'm calling. So what we're gonna do is use a generic here called T and T is gonna be something that is codable. And here I'm gonna say, uh, request from a URL, and we are going to be expecting a model of T.type, this is what we're gonna to decode to, and in our completion handler, what we're gonna want is an escaping block, and this escaping block in the success case for results should give us back T, otherwise an error, and this whole thing is gonna give us back void. So let's, uh, let's read through this and then we'll implement it and actually write out the calls to see this in action. So let me just line break all this good stuff to get some more readability and we'll talk about it. So essentially what we are saying here for the first parameter is that we wanna make a request to a URL, which is pretty straightforward. We also have this T codable business thing going on here. And what this is basically saying is the letter T here is gonna represent an object that is codable. Could be anything so long as it extends the codable protocol. Then for the second argument here, we are saying that this should be t.type. So let's say we're trying to decode, I don't know, a collection of users, we're gonna pass in user.self. And then finally, our completion block is gonna give us back a result, which is a way to represent success and error uh, you know, results. In the success case, we pass back an instance of t, otherwise we're gonna pass back an error, and this whole closure passes back void. So let's go ahead and write this out. One thing we're gonna want in here are some custom errors. So we'll go ahead and say uh, enum custom error is gonna be of type error. So the first one here will say invalid URL. And let's see if we have anything else. The next one we'll say is case uh, invalid data. Now we're gonna use these uh, right now actually. So the first thing we wanna do in here is unwrap our URL, not the data, because we don't even have data yet. So we're gonna say URL is URL. 
And uh, if we fail to do that, we just don't want to return without any uh, completion handler call because our caller is basically going to be sitting there waiting for something to have happened. So here I'm going to go ahead and say custom error and we're going to pass in invalid URL, which is why we created that case up there. Next up, we're going to actually create a task and this is going to be self dot data task with a URL and a completion handler, this last one here. And this is why we actually wrote this as an extension off of URL session. That way we don't even have to have a custom uh, class here. So here we're going to pass in URL. This completion block is going to give us back some data, optionally a response, which we particularly don't care about at the moment. The next thing in here that we want to do is actually unwrap said data. And again, if we fail to do that, we want to respond with in the completion handler with something appropriate. So we're going to say if we have an error, we're going to hand back the error. So we'll say completion is going to be failure passing in the error. And if we don't have an error, what we're going to do is once again call uh, the failure aspect of the completion handler. And instead, we're going to pass in here in valid data since that's the other custom error that we have created right up here. And now that we've got our data here, it's pretty simple, it's pretty generic, no pun intended. What we want to actually do in here is do a do catch. The catch block catches any error, so we're going to say failure and go ahead and pass up the error. And in here we're going to say the result is going to be try to use JSON decoder. And we're going to try to decode uh, expecting, keep in mind that's the parameter we passed in, from the data. And if we're able to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to call the completion handler with the success case and pass in the results. So this is the magical piece here where we're passing in this expecting parameter. Uh, and this is dynamic between uh, every, single AP, every single API call that we make here, right? Because we pass it in as a parameter. And most importantly, this warning is telling us we've assigned to this task property or this instance, I should say, but we never actually kick it off. So we're going to say task.resume. And just like that, we have created a generic API call. Now let's actually call it and see it in action. So what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, the results that we get from the endpoints and we're just going to drop it into a table view to make our lives uh, nice and easy. No custom table view cells today. We're just going to be doing a very custom or a very simple table view, I should say, so we can actually render our results so we can prove we're getting something back. But in your application, of course, do whatever you, uh, you need to do to render out your response. So we're going to register here a UI table, UI table view cell dot self. And this guy is going to be a cell. And let's just set up the table view really quick here. We're going to say view at sub view table. We're going to say table delegate is going to be self. We're also going to say table if it decides to line break. There we go. Data source is going to be self. We're going to lay out the table. We'll say super view did layout sub views and our table dot frame is going to be view dot bounds. And don't forget to conform to your table uh, protocols up here. So UI table view uh, delegate, which is the first one. That's not what we want. Let's see. Let's see. Delegate. There we go. And the next one we want is UI table view data source, just like that. And the two required functions we're going to want is uh, cell for row, cell for row at index path. And in this case, what we are going to do is create a cell by dequeuing it. We'll say table view, DQ a reusable cell with an identifier. Identifier is cell for index path, just like that. And here we're going to assign just some text to this. For now, I'll just make it hello. And then we're going to return cell. And the other function that we need here is number of rows in section. We'll just return 10 for now. And that's our table set up. And let's go ahead and make our call. So we're going to create it in a different function called fetch. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and basically simply say URL session shared. And we are going to say, uh, instead of data task, we're going to say a request, which is a custom function we made. And we're going to request to pass in constants dot our users URL. Now we need to actually create a model here that we can pass into expecting. So let's actually do that up here. I'm just going to stick it at the top of these files or this file for the sake of brevity. So we're going to have a single user model and our user is going to have, I believe, a name 
and a email. Let's go take a look at our actual JSON here to make sure I'm doing that correctly. So let's see, every single user here has an ID, a name, they've got an address here, phone, website, company. Let's see, it looks like they don't have an email. Ah, they do have an email, okay. So we've got a name and email, so that should be good to go. And now what I'm gonna pass in here is we want to decode a collection of user objects dot self. This is gonna give us our actual results back from the uh, API call. So let's go ahead and just line break all of this. And in here, we just need to actually handle it. So we're going to switch on the results. In the success case, we get a collection of users. In the failure case, we get a error, which we can go ahead and print out. And what I'm going to also do in here is say self.users is users. And we're also going to say self.tableview. Uh, dot reload data. Now we need to create this users collection and make this uh, self optional so we don't leak memory here. We'll say weak self. We also want to go ahead and do this stuff on the main thread. All right, just like that. And let's create our users collection up here. So we'll go ahead and say private var users is a array of user. And finally, I know we wrote a lot of code. Let's go ahead and also here just say return users.count. And the text label is simply going to be the nth user in our collection. So we'll say users index path dot row dot name, just like that. And we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and select a 12 pro max simulator, give this a run. And then we're going to swap it out for our to do list uh, API call and make sure that we're able to run that as well. So hopefully I don't have any errors here. Here's our handy dandy simulator. Let's go ahead and wait for this guy to load up and we should see a collection of users. And while that's going on, let's go ahead and take a look at our to-do list items here. It looks like we have a title and a completed, which is what we are going to go ahead and care about. So let's see, this guy is still loading here, I believe. Bear with the simulator. So let's go ahead and just create that model here. So here we're going to say to-do list item is going to be codable and there's going to be a title. And there's going to be a completed, which is a bool. Make sure you spell it correctly, the actual keys, otherwise it doesn't work. So title and completed, looking good. And here is our list of users, awesome. And now that we've got our to-do list uh, item model declared here, what we could do, and we could actually, uh, we could make this even more intelligent. Instead of having an array of users, we could go ahead and call this models, where a model is something that is codable. And instead of uh, doing this here, we can go ahead and say, if uh, the models and the nth element, if this is as a user, then we're gonna go ahead and assign the text as the name. Uh, otherwise, if this is a to-do list item, we're gonna go and assign uh, its title. And just like that, we can actually simply swap this out. So here we get uh, users back. We're gonna say self.models. And users here should be codable, so we should be able to assign to it just like that. And I'm gonna take this whole thing and we're gonna create another function. And this function is going to be fetch items for our to-do list item. And this is the beauty of generic API call functions. All we need to do here is change this to to-do list item and change this to to-do list URL, and that's it. We're good to go. All the other code remains the same. Our actual code to make the API call is identical and is highly reusable. So before we give it a run, let's go ahead and change this here, fetch items, and we should actually see our items. So let's make sure we don't have any errors. Looks like we do. Let's see what's going on. Somewhere down here, something's not happy. This should be models, because we renamed it. And the other thing I'll actually go ahead and do here, I'll say, uh, if let item is from our models, the nth element, and this is as a to-do list item, we're gonna say get the completed state. So I'll go ahead and say uh, cell dot accessory type equals uh, item dot completed. If it's completed, we're gonna say, uh, go ahead and add a check mark here. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and make the accessory nil. So we can actually, instead of saying nil, we can actually say none, which is another option available to us here. So that's basically it. Let's go ahead and give it a run and make sure we're seeing our to-do list items populated in our table view.
All right, boom, look at that. We've got our to-do list items. We've got our pretty cool looking check marks here. And once again, the point here isn't the actual to-do list. The point is we were able to take a function which we would traditionally write over and over for each of our API calls. And we were able to genericize it in a way where it's reusable. And a lot of people might say, well, what happens if you wanna handle every API call slightly differently? Um, the common argument to that is your function that's making the API call is probably not the best place to do that handling for that business logic. It's supposed to be, you know, single responsibility, so it should be a generic function to just make an API call. And when you do get that response back from the caller, which in this case we're calling it in the view controller, you can handle all that complexity in here, right? You can take a look at what the success was, if there was a success, if it failed, what to do if it failed, what type of error you had, et cetera, et cetera. So keep your uh, actual functions as generic as possible. It makes your life easier. You have to write less code. This is also how uh, UIKit and uh, you know Swift is built under the hood, standard library. But that's all I've got for you guys today. A little bit more of a technical video. I think it's pretty interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Super appreciate it. Destroy that subscribe button to stick around and keep growing this channel together. I really appreciate every single one of you that takes the time to watch the entire video. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next one.